We are live. I'm just waiting for YouTube to realize that. Oh, good. I was going to say, are we live? <laughs> it says we are live, yeah, but I'm just waiting for YouTube. Okay. There we are. There we are. Um, today, we are going to talk about chickens. Yes. All about chickens. <laughs> and what? Just trying to navigate this, trying to get it down, see how many people are watching. Bauterf is here in the house, and I'm hey guys. getting your pronunciation right, I hope. Bauterf. Bauterf. Is it like one? Is it like Bauterf, or is it like Bauterf? <laughs> I don't know if that's that different, but hey, the Prior Homestead. Good to have you here. We are going to be talking about chickens, and we are also going to be inviting that everyday Kyra in to talk some more about this mm -hmm. in just a little bit. So, okay, so like one word, butterf. 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 I missed the first word. I didn't hear what the difference was. <laughs> um, so chickens. We have two flocks of chickens here. Mm -hmm. And we have um, a couple different videos with our chickens in them. But just in case you didn't know them, uh, we have a flock of silkies. Yep, we have eight silkies, seven hens, and one rooster. Yeah, they're really cute, very colorful. Hey, Hannah. Um, Hannah at the Whitney Homestead is our moderator tonight, and we'll probably have some other moderators popping in at some point. But Hannah is awesome. They are going to be, at some point, making videos. Yeah. We keep telling you guys to go check out the Whitney Homestead, but they have no videos yet. Random sidebar as well. We have a dog chewing on a bone right now, so if it gets loud, oh goodness, what was that? I don't know. Did Anyways, if it gets loud, tell us. Hey Cheryl, how are you? It's good to have you here. So anyways, we have our two flocks of chickens, and feel free to ask questions about them as we're talking, mm -hmm. but um, our silky flock, and then we have our standard flock, and that's just a big diverse mix of chickens. Yeah. And we have tons of colored layers, and what is he doing? He's trying to eat stink bug. Oh. <laughs> Teddy is our resident stink bug eliminator. Yeah, it's 60 degrees out right now today, guys. Short sleeves, <laughs> shorts. <laughs> Nobody wants to see your legs. <laughs> Um, hey, Lavender Crowl, 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 pronunciation syndrome, it's a YouTube thing. So, what was I saying? The many breeds of our main flock. So I thing before that, oh, it's 60 degrees out, and so we get stink bugs at this time of year when it gets warm, yeah. and they come in the house. And so we have a lot of stink bugs right now, and Teddy eats them, so it's great. Yeah, we just flick him on the ground and he always goes right after them every time. I just tell him, hey Teddy, you want a stinko? And he, and he gets really excited. <laughs> do, you want a, do you want a stinko? Uh, oh, silky, yeah, silkies are great. So Teddy is currently trying to eat a stink bug and now it smells like stink bug in her house. I don't know what he's doing actually. He must have eaten it by now. Can you see what he's doing? Yeah, I'll check on it. <laughs> oh, so you have Orpingtons and Barred Rocks. What kind of Orpingtons? Are they buff Orpingtons? When we first got our first flock of chickens, we got six, six chickens. We got a Buff Orpington, a, an Easter Egger. Mm, well, okay. Yeah, not intentionally. Okay, so here's a list of breeds that we got at first. We got six. We planned to get six. Golden Laced Wyandotte, Silver Laced Wyandotte. Black Osterlord. Black Osterlord. Buff Orpington. Buff Orpington. Um, Americana, Americana and a well summer and a oh, well summer. Yeah. Well, the well summer was not a well summer. It was an Easter egger and we didn't realize that until it laid a green egg or a blue egg instead of a brown egg. And we just kind of thought we were like, which one's the well summer? We couldn't figure it out. Yeah. We were very, we were noobs. Yeah. Total noobs. Total newbies. I mean, we're still kind of noobs, but we're getting better. Yeah. That was two years ago. Yeah. <laughs> Oh my goodness. <laughs> um, and so we end, what we ended up with was no well summer. Um, but we had 
one of them was a rooster, our buff Orpington. And at the time we didn't want to have a rooster because we didn't want to have fertilized eggs. So we found a new home for him where he was. Someone was just looking for a rooster. Someone was block. looking for a guardian for their hens. So we um, rehomed him. And then the next year we kind of on a whim Got a few more chickens. Yeah, right around this time of year. A yeah. A little bit earlier than this. Kind of hard not to get more at this time of year because yeah. they're everywhere. And we got more Easter eggers. Yeah, we got. So we. Now I'm forgetting, actually. Did we trade or do go in at the same time as somebody else and just get three? No. We got. Um, I'm forgetting. Like more Easter eggers. So, anywho, um, now we have more chicks downstairs. And can you just Gracious. take care of them? <laughs> Oh, the dogs are being kind of crazy, guys. The I'm sorry. Do we keep them penned? Yes. So we have foxes on our property. Um, hey, Rocky Homestead. It's good to see you here. Hey, Abby at Forgotten Way Farms. Um, cooking dinner. Mm. I'm hungry. I didn't have breakfast this morning, and then I haven't eaten dinner yet. So I am going off of one meal right now, and I'm going to be eating a big dinner tonight. Chris is trying to take care of the animals. Um, but as far as chicken go, chickens go, yes, we do keep them in a coop and a run. And the run's pretty big. How big is it, babe? The run is about 25 feet by 18 feet. Yeah, so it's 25 by 18, so it's pretty big. Um, and there are nine. In the main flock? We have 10 currently in the main flock. And we, have we had a lot. We had 11. It's been an ever-changing target, but we have one copper moran rooster and then hey Josh. nine hens. Yeah. Um, hi, Whitney. Welcome. It's nice to have you. Is it warm down in Virginia? I know it's like really unseasonably warm here, which is really nice. It's mm -hmm. like 60 degrees. So our main flock has a coop and a run. Um, the coop was built by the Amish. They... There's a lot of Amish um, in this area, and they build amazing coops. They build amazing structures to begin with. So we, we bought that our first year when we moved here, and we actually added chickens before anything else um, right around my birthday in 2017, right after moving here. Seven, you're in Kentucky, Josh? I didn't know that. Um, 75 in Virginia. Holy cow. Are you guys going to get some wind after it being so warm? Um, Natalie, how are you? Chickens are the best. They're so fun. It was such a fun birthday gift. Also, that year for my birthday, it wasn't just chickens. Also, um, we added a miniature horse. So that was when we got Justin. I'm sorry to hear you're sick, Natalie. Um, is it like stomach bug or cold or something like that? That's such a bummer. Are, or you're in Kentucky for work. Isn't that kind of far from where you live, Josh? That's a long work trip. 62. Everywhere is so warm. Yeah, we're we're 60 degrees, and tomorrow is going to be in the 50s, and it's really nice here. But as far as chickens go, we um, last year we added copper morons, and that was – one of the best decisions ever. Do you want to go grab one of their eggs? Or a couple? Actually, just grab the like carton, and I'll show them the eggs. Yeah, and that was through our incubator too. Yeah, we hatched out copper morans through an incubator. Hey, butcher baker and the queso maker. You kind of have to say the whole name, or else it sounds doesn't sound as as fun. Thirty two in Newfoundland. Is that thirty two degrees Celsius or Fahrenheit? Uh, wow, everybody Probably is Fahrenheit. getting some, what? Probably Fahrenheit. Probably? Yeah, that would be like, really, yeah. really warm. Wouldn't it be like 60 something? I don't know, like 70 or 80, I would imagine. Hey, Katie. Don't quote me. BBQM. <laughs> I like Katie better. These are some of our colored eggs. So, these ones are all from Copper Moran's. And... Or, well, Moran's. One is a blue Moran. She's gorgeous. And one is a um, black copper. You can see, like, it looks a little lighter in here because of the light. But you can see it has, like, some speckles. It's super cool looking. And then this is from the blue. And it's just a little bit lighter 
I think it's from the blue. No, <laughs> so that yeah, one's not. That one's not. The blue, the blue Moran lays um, more, more of like, what's the word? An opaque? I don't know. It's a blue Moran. But they're really cool and they're dark brown. Yes, they're very pretty. Um, and these are blue. I don't know if you guys can tell that this is blue. Blue. And green. Um, those are from our Easter Eggers. So we have, like, we get blue eggs, we get green eggs, we get dark brown eggs, we get medium brown eggs. We're getting rainbow eggs these days. And actually, when you take an Easter Egger, so a chicken that either lays blue or green, and you cross them with a rooster that that carries the gene that lays this egg, that's when you get an olive egger and they lay like olive eggs. So they're like um, this, but even darker. Because it's just chaos in this house right now. Every time I sit down, it gets up and gets. Well, what was that sound in the background? I just got a peanut butter jar and I get rid of the tractor. <laughs> oh, guys, life with pets. I'm so sorry you're not feeling well, Natalie. Go rest. Um. Good question, Hannah. Which breed is your favorite for personality? That's my question. I like, I don't know. What do you mm, think, Chris? That is a good question. They probably can't hear you unless you get closer. I know. I, I just really don't want to sit down again because I keep popping it out of the picture and I feel rude. It's okay. Favorite favorite chicken for personality? Silkies, actually. That's well, easy. Yeah. The Silkies are, Silkies so, are so docile. They're so docile. You can just like pick them up and they're just like, yeah, I mean, even when they're broody, and that's kind of when they act like they're their meanest, they have no bite behind all their words. <laughs> we have two broody hens right now, and every time I have to move them to get the eggs out from out from underneath them, and they just snarl at me and make all these sounds, they never try to peck at me or anything. <laughs> they, they growl never at you. Anything. They sound like little dinosaurs. <laughs> they do sound like dinosaurs. They're so cute. Hey, Alan, welcome. It's nice to have you guys here. Um, okay, guys, what is your favorite chicken breed? Comment in the chat and I see this right now <laughs> yeah he won't let's see let's show them oh now he comes down this is a consequence of full-time working and trying to maintain all these animals yeah so he has the a dog, lot of energy when we get home the dogs get really excited when we get home okay favorite breed growling chickens yes they growl they growl they're like totally what's the sound they make it's like a screech Josh, that's not a correct, as an incorrect answer. <laughs> um, chicken breeds, you're a quail guy, right? Dog is your favorite breed. <laughs> oh, yes. Yeah. So, which you've had, you have a Bard and an Orpington. Do you have a favorite out of those two? Um, and so, favorite chicken breed, what else did I want to ask? Mm, oh, which, which ones do you think have cooler egg colors? Like, are you a, are you, are you a green egg? Or a round, dark brown egg. What kind of egg are you guys? <laughs> Quiz. Ducks. Abby, what kind of duck breeds do you have? At least you guys can all or see. Or are your know. favorite. So, okay. So, cool fact. We have tried so hard to add an Orpington to our flock. The first time we tried, it was a rooster. And that wouldn't be a problem now. But we really want a hen. We yeah. really want an Orpington hen. So we already have a rooster who's kind of cleaned his space here. Um, and then the second time, oh my gosh. the second time we added Orpingtons. Lavender we add, Orpingtons. Yeah, we added lavender Orpingtons. And we added three. We hatched, we hatched three. them out. And all three ended up being roosters. So we're four for four with Orpingtons being roosters. Yeah. So now we just hatched out, we or start, we just got three more Orping, lavender Orpingtons. Start placing bets. We can make a lot of money. Out of <laughs> Guys, we really want to end up with just one hen, just one Orpington hen, because I've heard so many great things about them. I would love to have um, an Orpington hen in our flock. Hey, Rose. Hey, Rose. And somebody asked if these eggs taste the same. Yeah, they do. Like colored egg, the color doesn't change the taste at all. So like these taste like just like a regular egg, um, but the difference. I've seen is between like bantam eggs versus regular chicken eggs. I think they taste a little different because I think the bantam has like a higher proportion of yolk to egg white. 
I don't know. And Kana ducks. That's pretty cool. Aren't those are those a rare breed, Abby? Rose, what kind of ducks Ugh. do you have? Sorry, my knee's getting licked. Sorry. <laughs> I'm very distracting right now. I know. Our fur babies are wondering who we're talking to. <laughs> They're kind of obnoxious. To the, be just one fur baby's obnoxious. Yeah, okay, Rose, you have Ancona too. And they're a rare breed, right? Okay, so I'm going to go ahead and invite Kyra in. I need to, let's see. Has she been on the chat at all? No, I just need to figure out how to do it. Okay, here we go. Sending an invite. Rare heritage breed. That's really cool. Interesting. We want to add ducks, I think. Wow. <laughs> We want to add ducks. I think we're going to add ducks this year. I just need to get some stuff situated. So we want to have a separate coop for them, and we want to have a separate run for them, and we need to figure out a water source for them. So want to plan that out. <laughs> he looks. I wish we could show. Like, can we? Can we like show his face? He's making a really guilty looking face. Oh, not interested. <laughs> We really need a vacuum. That's why the vacuum's there. It's a constant reminder of. <laughs> now he's looking at you. Guys, this is. Do you want to just leave? And take him. Turning into the Teddy show. Hey. All about Teddy. You know? I had an answer. <laughs> Welcome. Hi. Hi. Are we live? Hi, everyone. <laughs> remind, remind me of her name, Kyra. Uh, it's Catherine. Hi, Catherine. Can you say hi? Hi. She's so cute. Thank you. So it's okay. So, guys, we have somebody new joining us tonight on the live. Do you want to introduce yourself? I'm Kira from That Everyday Kira. Yeah. And I am an urban homesteader with a big mess behind me. <laughs> Sorry. Yes. And this is Catherine. <laughs> Catherine and Kira. Yes. Hi. I will live in the chat. Oh, that's you. You said I will live in, in the chat. Hold on one second. Catherine, do you want to say something about the chicks? Read the chat. Wait, my box. Yeah. All right. Yeah. That's our youngest guest. All right. I mean, yeah. <laughs> oh, it's just kind of one of those nights, guys. I from um, being on a conference trip thing, and then we were tapping on this afternoon, and then I had to get this thing going, and it's just been one of those days. Yeah. Uh, I wanted to hear what you, what your experience has been like, Kira. Um, well, so far, um, it's, it's been pretty easy so far. They've been, um, hold on. I'm trying to read the chat at the same time. <laughs> um, no, they've been great. They, I, I went and, Catherine, baby, I went and picked them out from the local feed store. And <laughs> Can you go play? No. no. Um, I went and picked them out from the local feed store and they were straight run and um, I figured out how to feather sex them. And it turned out that everything that I read on how to do it was right. Oh, and, cool. Yeah, right. And so um, I have six females and hold on a second. <laughs> go, can y'all go upstairs? Hey, Miriam. So you have two hens and you're adding eight chicks. That's so exciting. Congratulations. What kinds are you adding? Catherine the chicken swatter. <laughs> oh my gosh. Um, and lavender, crawl, crawl, I forgot. I'm so bad with pronunciation. Um, I'm going to go ahead and just like hold, hold it clicked on who's talking so it doesn't like jump back and forth. Hey, a little more culture. Is it John? Um, okay, so you have seven hens. 
Do you want to, hey babe, do you want to grab one of our Oh, maybe the Brahma? Yeah. That's actually, you know what? Right? Totally real life. If you want, um, you can just shoot me a message when things have settled and I can add you back in. I'm just going to sit out here in the sunroom. Oh, perfect. Where my actual chickens are. So. <laughs> oh, perfect. Look at them. They're dinosaurs. Yes, they're, they're tiny little dinosaurs. Now I have to figure out where I am. Yeah, the chat, I can let you know if, you, if there's any questions too, if it's too hard to like jump back and forth. Okay. Yeah. I just, yes. So show us your chicks. Okay. So hold on just a second. Here we go. So these are my chicks. I have uh, six females and four males. So 10 all together. Awesome. Yeah. And they're how old now? They're six weeks tomorrow. I'm going to bring one in. Oh, perfect. And Chris is going to grab one of our new additions. Um, Miriam, okay, so you're getting two Rhode Islands, two Buffs, two Bard, and two Americanas. Oh, yeah. We just have the sex through the wing. Is that a sex thing? Hmm. I do not know the answer to that, but here I might because she just did it. Um, and both these you cannot feather sex. Okay. Don't mean to hold her. Yeah. Okay. Right. Chicks are communicating. Chick to chick. <laughs> so how old is that one? Six weeks. Okay, and this is one week. One little week. And look, other two. How cool is that? <laughs> Wait, Hi, this so, is a um, Brahma. So they get to be, I'll show you guys actually. Can you go ahead and bring her back down? I don't want her to get too traumatized. The Teddy, the Ted, uh, the Ted Labrador is a little crazy. Roll her by them. Oh, so yeah, so Rose says feather sexting only works on certain breeds. Yes, that's definitely true. And there are some breeds that are called sex links, and they are identifiable by gender when they're born. Um, I believe. Correct me if I'm wrong. I'm not an expert. On I, think, I think there are some that you can identify, like some only the females are only a certain color and the color yeah that's what i think sex, like, sex links are um and then feather sex is like that you can like lift up the feathers and you can tell by the shape well um with mine you you pull out the wings i've got a video that explains a little bit more but um you you pull the wings out and stretch them out a little bit and the females will have two layers of feathers whereas the males only have one layer of feathers and another especially with um, buffs you can really tell the difference between their development um, the females will get their permanent feathers a lot quicker where they start to look like tiny dinosaurs um, pretty quickly and the males still look um, like babies for a while and their comb development is pretty significant after that too yes yeah all I know is we've had all groups when it comes to organ and they've all had their significant colds. <laughs> Very wet or pink, I should say. And this one, this this one, you can tell the difference. I got a, a roo, right? Yeah, this one's a roo, and this one's a hen. hen roo, hen. You can see the difference in color of the color. Right. Now, but that's recent. That's recent. Just in the last week. The rooster's gotten a lot darker than the hen. Mm. And you can tell his comb is developed and starting to turn red. And even on his wings, oh, come here. <laughs> on his wings, you can tell that they're not, 
completely. Hold on, let me see if I can get them to open. No, okay. <laughs> but on his wings, they're not completely um, filled out right here yet. Oh, yeah. That's so, so interesting. And so you are asking about your crib and oh. we're on it. So somebody, uh, can someone pull the link to that video? Chris can probably do it. Um, that was a really fun video. You just showed the process of turning a crib into a brooder. Yeah, basically. And I, I kind of... I have two videos where I'm, I'm working on it and there's one where I explain it like fully. Um, I kind of was working on it while I had the flu, so I didn't really get the best explanation. But basically, um, my, my youngest doesn't use a crib anymore and it had missing pieces, so I couldn't really sell it. Um, so what I did is I fixed the support on the underside and put um, mesh wiring on the inside and just made a, a lid to prevent my cat from getting into it and now that they're bigger to prevent them from getting out. That's awesome. And how's it going for you? Do you like it? Yeah, um, I really like it. I I would have made a little, uh, some changes. The, the bedding falls out the front. So I think um, what I would do differently is just put like um, – wood along the sides here mm -hmm. and from spilling out because i've got like you can it's all down oh yeah okay so i'm constantly putting it back in and um so i, I would change that but other than that i'm really happy with it awesome thanks yeah. to prior home for right. posting that article that that will be really helpful um for people who want to know about that um, we, I, I love the idea of like using what you have for a brooder. We, um, have these kind of cages that we use sometimes for the bunnies and they're like, what do you call what they are? They're metal? It is a metal wire. Yeah, they're like a metal wire cage and they're pretty big. They're like three feet by two feet and they, you can take the top off and you can open it up in the front and you can remove the pan. So it's like works perfect. Um, so it's like, you don't have to use one of the bins. Um, can just use something more permanent, which is nice. But you can just get like a Tupperware bin for like 50 bucks at Walmart and use that as a brooder as well. Um, what do you guys use for brooders? For those of you who have chickens, did you use like something? Did you repurpose something? Did you, what do you guys use? So tell us about your experience. Like, what what made you choose that breed? Um, where did you go to get them? All of that. Um, honestly, I wasn't originally going to get chickens um, for my first bird. We were thinking about ducks, and we were thinking about quail. Mm. And we had uh, we had settled on we wanted to get chickens at some point. And we still hadn't completely decided what we wanted to do first. So when we went to um, our local feed store, it wasn't for anything in particular other than pricing because we also want rabbits and we just wanted to see what they had, how much it was. And um, they had the buff Orpington chicks and they had um, puka morans. Mm. And so I went home and I did some research on the two breeds and I really liked what I had read about the disposition of Buff Orpingtons and decided that um, if we were going to go ahead and do chickens, that that would be the breed we would want to start with. So we sat down and talked about it and priced things out and decided to go ahead and and try it out. So That's awesome. Yeah, I've heard really great things about the Orpingtons as well. Um, hey. Your breeder is really cool. It's like a nice big size. I really like it. Um, so let's see. You said you had some in your bathroom in a cardboard box. <laughs> Hang, heat lamp hanging off my tripod. I love that. Um, some staple, staple feed bags decide to hold in the heat and use Premier One heat lamp. Yeah, so um, we have two different ways that we heat our brooder. Um, we have a premier one heat lamp, and that's really nice. I really, really like that. Um, but we also have a 
<laughs> my dog, my dog has, um, has a peanut butter jar. I can just hear the peanut butter jar. <laughs> um, but the other thing we have is a heat plate, and that's a birthday heat plate. Um, and I think I prefer the heat plates because you don't even have to monitor the temperature at all, which is really nice. You just like move it up as you click throw, and it kind of mirrors the how the broody hen would be over the, over the chicken. So I wonder if the sound's getting messed up. I don't know. So someone says sound quality is not good. Can you elaborate on that? Is it too loud? Are the chicks too loud? Are we <laughs> <laughs> mess up the feathers on top of the chick? Oh, really? I haven't heard that before, Jay. Maybe you know what? It sounds like um, maybe somebody didn't move it up quickly enough for the chicks as they were going. I bet, I think it's on your end going into. Kira's computer, I'm guessing. Oh, it's possible because I'm, I don't have like a headset or anything. You're just coming straight into, I'm not, I don't hear an echo. And yeah, I, I can hear it. I think I can hear it a little bit. Um, I'm sorry, guys. <laughs> I don't know how to fix it. I, I, can, I, can, I, can, computer? Um, I can put, I can go get um, a headset real quick. I'll be right back. Okay. Okay, I'm turning the volume down on my end, and hopefully that helps. Let me know. Just give me a message if it's better. Um, okay. So, Rose, what bad things did you hear about it? Because I'm really curious, because I haven't heard anything bad about them before, and I haven't seen any issues, but it's good to know um, the pros and cons of what you use. I just like them because it's at my end echoing. I don't know. Must have must have something to do with the hangout. Um, okay, yeah, we'll see. We'll see if when she puts the earbuds in, if it solves the problem. Sorry, guys, that's frustrating. Going like this, you use the warming plates and they work great. Okay, guys, this is a debate. Warming plates or heat lamp? I think I'm more. I think I like the heat plate better because chicks dying from the heat plate. I don't know. Yeah, that's that's not good. But all right, headset is in. Let's see if that makes a difference. Hey guys, how's the echoing? Let me know. Um, okay, so I also wanted to talk about like what what you do when you get chicks. So. There's a couple things like when you first get chicks that are really important to get set up. Um, and the first one is obviously your heat source. So like I said, you can either use a heat plate or a heat lamp. And Kira, you're using a heat lamp, right? Which kind I, of just a regular heat lamp? Yeah, just, a, well, um, yeah, it's just one that I got from the food store. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And those are great. Those, those are low cost, but they can be a fire hazard, especially if it's in like a barn or something. But uh, we used one and we had no problem with it. Um, and you could also use a Premier One heat lamp. They're expensive though. They're like uh, probably about $80, 70 to $80, but they have a guard. And so the heat, the bulb sits like in here and then there's like a whole guard around it. So they, they aren't going to start a fire. It is the bomb. It's the bomb.com. Um, yeah, chicks, chicks can get overheated either with a heat lamp or anything you use if you're not monitoring um, the temperature of your brooder. I, what? Yeah, they need to be able to get away from the heat. So if the space is too small and your heat is too close, um, that could definitely overheat and kill chicks. So they're really sensitive in those first couple of days. Um, so one thing, yeah, so 
I'm going to actually show you guys my screen because um, sorry, I realized it wasn't on me. Um, I'm going to show you guys my screen because I just made this little chart thing for chicks and temperature. Just need to pull it up. I haven't like posted it anywhere yet. I'll just post it probably somewhere soon. That's not very detailed. I'll post it like tomorrow. Okay, just need to share my screen. Great. So, whoa. <laughs> okay, so essentially what you guys can see here, actually I'm gonna change this real quick. Um, I'm gonna share just the application. Okay, can you see it? Yes, <laughs> I can. Okay, so this right here tells you what the recommended temperatures are by week. And so when you first get them, like when they're incubated, they're at 100 degrees. Your incubator is at 99.5. And then at week one, it's going to go down to like 95, and then five degrees each week that goes on. And so eventually you're getting to week six where um, Kira's chicks are at right now. And once they're feathered out and ready to go pretty much outside, then it's really 70 degrees. And you really don't need heat at that point if, you're, if your room environment is at 70 degrees. So, and then also on this little thing is just things to check. Um, each day, like you're gonna check there, please see that, that's huge. That can kill them really quickly. Um, just checking to make sure they don't have parasites, activity level, and then eating and drinking. So those are some things to kind of keep in mind. Hey, Elkin Anchor, how are you guys? Okay, so who else joined? I wanna say hi to everybody. Hi guys. That's a fun word. Yeah, so you're really just helping them adjust to um, your climate that that you're in over time, over like a six to eight week period. Mm -hmm. But really, it's also good to pay attention to how they're responding to the heat. So if they're getting too warm, they're going to be really avoiding the heat lamp, and they're going to be running to the other side. Um, and if they're too cold, they're all going to be huddled under the heat lamp constantly. So you really want to avoid those two things. OK, so uh, Elkin Anchor are here. Welcome. Who else did I miss? Francine, hi, thanks for being here. Um, if you have joined and have not said hello yet, I apologize. I'm trying to keep up with the chat and everything else. And um, I'm a little off today just because getting back from a trip. So I apologize if I'm- Francine asked what pasty butt is. Okay, pasty butt is not pleasant. Um, did, you have, did you run into that at all, Kira? No, I was uh, lucky. None of mine had pasty butt. Okay. So I'll just explain it real quickly because we just lost a chick recently. Um, not from Pasty Butt. Um, she just wasn't like she, it was from a, it was a hatching issue. Um, she you know, died within like within four hours. Yeah, really 24 hours. It was really sad. Um, but Rose, you've never had Pasty Butt? That's surprising. Even buying chicks from the store, Rose? That's so surprising. Um, Pasty Butt is when essentially, it often happens when you have them shipped or you buy them from like a store and um and they i don't know can you explain I it i don't know what i don't, the science, science, I don't know what like the science it. is behind it exactly but essentially the feces builds up on the rear ends and kind of dries out and covers up their I'll use all the technical terms here, but it covers things up and they it, can't go to the bathroom. Yeah, so it, it locks up their there. body and prevents them from actually excreting or, um, yeah, you know, using all the terms. Yeah, and so it can kill them pretty quickly. And when they're really little, yeah, there you go. There you go, Hannah. Their vents get vents clogged get with clogged. poop. That's it. Tasty vent. Vent was right there. Yeah. yeah, I mean, I don't like talking about poop, but welcome, Liz. It's nice to have you here. And someone else joined, and I think I missed it. I don't know. Um, yeah, it's not pleasant, and they can you can lose them really quickly, um, and it's really sad because they're so helpless. Elkin Anger, how are your chicks doing? Have you guys had any issues at all with your with your open chicks? I know you guys just got some, um, but 
We have noticed that if you hatch out your own chicks or, you know, whether it's hatching eggs or you have eggs in your own farm, we've never had an issue with that for our chicks. Um, so I think that it, there's definitely something with the stress of shipping or the stress of being like... And you're transferring them from a hatchery to a store and they have lots of people looking at them in the store and then you then they go home with you. And so lots of changes in scenery for the first few days of their lives. Yeah, yeah. so... I definitely am a big proponent of hatching them ourselves. Oh, Miriam, yes. Good chicken books. Can you grab them? Oh, that's, I was like, where is he going? He's going to grab chicken books. We have yeah. chicken books on our coffee table. Elk and Anchor said that their chicks are doing well. What? Elk and Anchor's chicks are doing well. Oh, good. I'm glad to hear that there's no pasty butt there. It's not pleasant, and you have to clean it off. And I don't like gross off. things or poop. Yeah. Rose, you're right, but we haven't gotten any from the supply either, and we still had issues with it when we got from got chicks from hatcheries. I don't know. Okay, so this is the first book that I really like because Lisa Steele is a boss. Yeah, um, Fresh Eggs Daily. So this one goes over a lot of like natural herbs that you can use. Um, it talks about like gardening for chickens, so like what you plant in their run and around their run, um, protecting your plants from your chickens is really helpful. So funny, John. You're always <laughs> with the jokes. Oh my gosh, look at this awesome dust feeding area. Right. You want to set up? <laughs> Yesterday, our chickens started dust bathing in their coop. It was hilarious. Um, and then the other one that I really like, oh, it also talks about safe things for them to eat. So that's pretty cool. The other one that I like is this one, which is just kind of a cool book. It's a natural history book and it talks about heritage breeds of chickens and like origins of domesticating chicken, anatomy of a chicken. I don't know. It's basically a big, it's a big knowledge resource for different breeds yeah. and the history of chickens and how they all operate and so it's called i'm going to type in the chat what's it called babe it's called the chicken a natural history a natural no it's not what i meant to type a natural history by dr joseph Barber. and then there's the other one which is Just fresh, fresh eggs daily eggs daily and she has a blog What's the name of her blog um she's a blog and she has an instagram and she's awesome do you guys know who lisa Steele is she's really cool you're welcome, Miriam. I'm glad you asked that question. Have you, what resources did you use, Kira? I keep, I'm so bad at pronouncing people's names. <laughs> um, I I watched a lot of YouTube channels. Favorites? Yeah. Um, I really I I liked a lot of wholesome roots. To be honest with you, I like a lot. She's to be honest with you, Rose. She makes such videos like she makes she's very thorough and I like that because a lot of people um, while they they make good uh, videos and it's also very educational you make sure that you understand what it is that she's trying to say in her videos and so honestly <laughs> yeah that's awesome Rose is like what <laughs> Rose is awesome she, yeah, she is like such a resource. She's a wealth of knowledge. <laughs> She's like, I talked to Rose and I'm like, I feel like I learn like, like semesters worth of information in like a single conversation. So go head over to Rose's channel if you haven't. <laughs> and if you have, just give her some love. Um, somebody posted, okay, so yeah, so Hannah at the Whitney Homestead posted, um, <laughs> Posted that daily blog and you can search there for all sorts of things. She has like she's basically an article on almost anything yeah. you could ever want to ask about a chicken. Everything. She's awesome. And I follow her on Instagram. And she's like, what's great about her too is um sh she like knows a lot about different breeds and different ways to she's, add herbs to your chicken's she's diet. She's pretty focused on doing things really naturally, as much as possible. And her chickens live a long time. Like they live like eight years, nine years, ten years because she just knows what she's doing. So that's the to what she's doing. Um, that you watch for chicken info, Lavender. Um, and what's your name? Just so I can 
<laughs> I feel silly referring people as their channel name. Sometimes. I don't know. I love when like it's easy with you, Kira, because your name is your in your channel. Yeah. It's funny when people say, "Hey, Sunshine Farm." I'm like, "Hey," but it's weird. Like I'm not used to being called that, you know? Right. So. Um, well, I, I wasn't sure where my channel was gonna go when I first named my channel, so I didn't. I just. Yeah. You know, what's your YouTube journey been like? Uh, honestly, it started out with just um, recipes and baking because I, at the time when I started my channel, I lived in an apartment in Tulsa. Um, I had just moved there, and it was something that I wanted to do, and it was just that was the time that I had presented for the opportunity to start. And um, it took a while for me to um, get up the nerve to expand to like more vloggy type videos. I've been gardening for years and it's just not something that I've ever had the confidence to really just sit in front of a camera and talk about before. Like even yeah. like while you were talking, I think it was on me and I was sitting there going, <laughs> oh, sorry, I keep, well, cause if I don't click it, then it, then it um, like jumps back and forth because it'll hear the chick, the chicks cheeping, and then it'll jump. And then I click and never get it. Oh, I'm the worst at this. So cute. Hi, Mr. Rue. Does he have a name? Not yet. Not uh, yet. Because I'm not sure if he's going to stay around long enough to have a name. Yeah, because he's a rooster. Right. Yeah. And we're not allowed to have them in town. So um, oh. either he'll. Um, dinner or he'll go to somebody else who can have him yeah and uh and then three of the girls are going to a friend who lives down the street and oh, cool. staying with me and then i want to um get some easter eggers and i think john said that he had a few for me they're not very far from me they're just um about, oh, yeah. they're they're about to you? five minutes 50 minutes south of me and where are you? I am in Bartlesville, Oklahoma. Oklahoma. Cool. I am it's so a, bad at geography. Hey, Morgan, it's, it's about um, 40 minutes north of Tulsa. So. Okay. Where are we from Oklahoma? Where are we? I have no concept of where Oklahoma is. <laughs> We're in the middle of the country. Oh, perfect. Okay. So I know California and like what's on the west and i know new york and what's on the east i thought that um new hampshire was where north dakota is for the longest time i'm the worst at geography <laughs> and i'm not i'm not dumb but i'm really bad at geography um yeah these triggers are so fun i just showed my uh eggs earlier in the chat do you want to grab them again actually because there's new people and i want to show my pretty eggs <laughs> that sounds so weird <laughs> yes show the eggs we want to see the eggs. <laughs> Oh, guys, it's been a long day. I've been driving a lot. Oh, Morgan, we found, well, Chris found your video really helpful for collecting maple sap because we were doing the same thing. We have our first gallon bucket of maple sap. Um, more eggs, guys. You're stuck on Kira. Oh, why do I keep doing <laughs> That's that? That's awesome. Um, yeah, so, Morgan, how's the collecting maple sap going? We have five five buckets out there yes. and we've discovered we have like 20 tree maple trees. So that's pretty exciting. I'm so incredibly jealous about maple collecting. Um, I lived in Quebec for four years. I love maple everything and we don't, we just don't have that here. And pure maple syrup is so expensive. It is expensive and we buy, we buy it and it's like, we go through it like crazy. So I'm really hoping that we can make enough for just the two of us. You got eight gallons today. Oh my gosh. That's insane. Yeah. So we had just probably about two and a half gallons today. How many trees do you have tapped and how many, how many buckets do you have out there? Did he say that? In the video? I haven't watched it yet. Yeah, I think so. It was this morning and I've forgotten. So exactly. um, I'm in North um, East Oklahoma, like close to the Ozarks, really close to Kansas, uh, Missouri and Arkansas. Not in the panhandle. <laughs> who, who asked that? Some, oh, um, oh Stevie okay. Stead and Francine. And Quebec is that? Where's Quebec? Is near us, right? Yeah, it's like right above you. <laughs> yeah. So, what brought you? Like, where? When did you live there? And what brought you down to Oklahoma? My my mom is German and my dad is Canadian. 
Oh, cool. So um, I was born in Germany. We lived in Canada for a while when I was really little. And then my parents split up and then we lived in Ohio for a while. I lived in central Arkansas for a while. And I'm in Oklahoma now just because my husband um, got a job opportunity in Tulsa that was way better than what he had in, in Arkansas. So we couldn't turn it down. Yeah. Interesting. That's awesome how many places you've been. Yeah. Uh, okay. So Morgan, so you have nine buckets and that was, that got you eight gallons. Did you say eight gallons? I missed it. Yeah. So we got two and a half today from two buckets. Morgan says the ratio is 40 to one. So I think it will make about a quart. That's kind of what I thought. It, I thought the five gallons we would make would make about a cup. Is that not right? I don't know. I can't do all, <laughs> all these conversions in my head right now while we're trying to focus. Head math. Mental math. Go. Um, my mom's Canadian. Well, kind of. She was born in Canada. and her, Canadian. <laughs> yeah, I guess. She was born in Canada, and her dad um, is Canadian. Um. So many Canadians in here, guys. Yeah, awesome. Canadians are awesome. <laughs> um, in public, but I can't do the cooking conversions in public. <laughs> Who's asking? Is someone More, asking about Morgan that? Morgan said, "Isn't like doing math." In public. I don't like doing math in public. I feel like I feel so judged doing math at all. Like I feel like I I can make the smallest, silliest mistake. The conversions for cooking are just way too obscure. Yeah. Um, okay, so don't boil it in your house. Yes, I've heard that you can completely destroy your your ceiling and all of that because of humidity levels. So we are going to be borrowing a... Uh, hopefully a camp stove yeah. to do it outside. Yeah. Well, we have to, I suppose, to purchase one too, but... Yeah, well, I guess we're kind of veering off topic because we're talking about maple syrup Yeah, we now. are. <laughs> That's actually started. Oh, so good. tasty. We right. couldn't help ourselves. Morgan. Come it's the so tasty, mm -hmm. and maple syrup and chickens go so well together. It's true, because you need pancakes to make, you need eggs to eggs make to make pancakes. <laughs> yes. But no, have you ever tried to just drizzle maple syrup over um, scrambled eggs and eat it with bacon? It's yeah, it, it's good. no, I haven't. I mean, up, accidentally, yeah, I've eaten eggs. Accidentally mixing. Yeah. I do it on purpose. <laughs> You're in Nova Scotia. That's where is that in relation to Quebec? Chicken it's on the coast. coast. It's on it, Nova Scotia is an island um, off the coast, the east coast. Okay. Oh, and it's warmer. Is that because of the water? Yeah, they get they get warmer weather. That's awesome. Yeah, because Quebec's got to be really cold because we so cold. we get um, a little bit warmer here because of the temperatures um, from the lake, but. Yeah. So chickens. Okay, guys, post your chicken questions. What questions do you have? What questions do you have about keeping chickens, Kira? Like, what are you thinking? Like, what is your plan for the coop? And what are you, like, what are your plans? What are your questions? Um, really, honestly, I wanted one of those really cute prefab chicken coops that you can buy for, like, way too much money. And my husband said that I was crazy and told me no. Um, we have a detached garage that we don't use for parking. So what the plan is to enclose one of the bays and make that a coop. It has a window that goes into our backyard and the, it'll be attached to a run of sorts and um, maybe attempt to make a tunnel that goes all the way around the fence through the gardens and stuff for them. And then, of course, when I'm out there to be able to supervise, then they'd just be free to go wherever totally and you can train them pretty easily like um we did that with our first flock we haven't been as good about it with our other chickens but we train them to like come to treats like when you shake a feed bag like mm -hmm. they come running although some of them are a little silly and will like there'll be one that will hide off and so you have like all of them except for one um oh propane Hey, Jason from Start From Seed Home Set. It's nice to see you here. Okay, so are you tapping your trees? I think you must be because you have yeah, he a... said he was earlier, but he said the sap wasn't flowing yet, I think. A little too cold still, although today it should be flowing. Um, is that too many chickens? That's so funny. It's so... Okay, so every year, guys, I think that um, I 
I'm good. Like I won't get chicken fever and I won't like want to add new breeds. And then every year spring comes along and then I'm like obsessed with chickens again and chicks and all of that. But we have 15 chicks right now downstairs and we definitely don't want to add any more. No. Well, we'll hatch out some more probably, but we'll probably find homes for them because we have lots of silky hatching eggs and people love silkies. Um, okay, so you are using tunnels around your garden. That's really cool. Like, what do you do with that? Like chicken wire? Um, yeah, you can use chicken wire or um, the, that mesh wire that has the, the closer holes that aren't well, there. Well, hardware cloth. Hardware cloth. Hardware cloth. Yeah, there we go. That's what I used for the, um, the brooder. Awesome. Yeah, and who did that? Um, Joanna Gaines. Um, fixer upper she did that in her garden they made a, i think they made an episode on it it was uh was youtube it video i think it was on maybe TV. it was a youtube video i don't know she made like tunnels all around her garden and it was like the whole perimeter of the garden to keep it was like a moat yeah it was super cool a chicken moat, a mo a chicken moat. that's awesome um, really cool. and we want to do something like that with chickens um in our, we want it because we have so like our gardens here i'm not even gonna try showing you our garden um is kind of set away from where the chicken coop is but it's it's going to be expanding over time to go right up next to the chicken chicken right so i'd love to set up the tunnel system to have be able to free range the chickens kind kind of free range them in the garden through a tunnel because they go straight for the plants and they dig them up immediately right yeah, yeah. That's, that's my main um reasoning behind having one of those tunnels is because my my entire backyard is a garden at this point <laughs> yeah uh, permaculture See you bye later, john um somebody wants you to make a video about your coop transformation i'm guessing you're planning on doing that um yeah i am i am planning on filming the majority of that yes and that's awesome i'm really looking forward to seeing that <laughs> Um, I love the idea of reusing, using what you have instead of spending money. If yeah. we did it again, I probably wouldn't, we probably wouldn't buy a, the $1,500 that we bought. That yeah. That was 12. Maybe it was 12. Still, that's a lot of money yeah. and we could have built it, built it ourselves, but we were so new. I mean, we didn't know anything about homesteading. Totally. Yeah. We were not nearly we as self-sufficient when we first started yeah, we, out we, this we, journey. Yeah. And it's, it's kind of crazy to look back on like the decisions we made when we first moved here and like how different we would be these days. But, um, we are building our second coop for our silkies and what's the channel name that you're going to follow? So I follow a channel called Homesteadonomics. And it's this guy, I think his name is Joe. He's out in Arizona. And he just basically does a lot of, um, his channel is mainly projects. He just does a bunch of different random builds and things like that. And he's got a really nice chicken coop tutorial and um, just really thought out, really well thought out design. So I think we're going to end up following that for our silkies. He also made a like underground buried uh, greenhouse. That's really cool. Yeah, not, not completely underground, but it was partially buried underground greenhouse. He made a workshop out of a shipping container. He made has his a own ton of rainwater travel harvesting trailer. videos. They built a travel trailer. He's so cool. Homesteadonomics is awesome. Yeah, yes, everybody loves them. See, they're awesome. <laughs> and it's so cool because they just provide videos. Like it's like on, it's like how to do this. It's real. It's not like anything. He likes building else. stuff. It seems like, and so He's his channel is basically it. about building stuff and trying to be self-sufficient with that. But it's very inspiring to see somebody build something that you would never think that you could build. So yeah. we're using the chicken tutorial, singing "Good Night," singing to y'all like in the sound of music. <laughs> That's so funny. Good night, Abby. Good night, Abby. Um, so long, farewell. I love that. It makes me want to sing. I'm not gonna sing here. That's too exposed. I sang in one of my videos recently, and that was enough. Exposed. That was enough exposure. <laughs> I'm not brave enough for that. Um, you won't catch me singing in <laughs> of public sing? setting. Um, I used to in high school. I um, don't anymore. I'm. We should make a singing challenge video, and then we should tag Kira. I won't respond to it. That would be pretty hard. <laughs> what if it was like? What if it was like singing video, and then like your name was in the title? It was like. 
to get curious? <laughs> um, I, I don't know because I kind of already, um, found a way to like skirt the dance challenge by basically just putting footage of my kids in there for them. <laughs> I did not get tagged in the dance challenge and I am a that would be anti-viral. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it would be anti-viral. <laughs> yeah, probably not my best strategy. Same. <laughs> I love it. No. Yeah, singing's fun. I sing in high school too and kind of just haven't, I mean, I sing all the time, but I haven't like done it. Yeah. Right. In years. Ashley, thanks for stopping by. We appreciate that you really enjoy our videos. Yeah, thanks, Ashley. Do you have a favorite one? I'd love to hear which ones you really like. Um, sing, yeah, so <laughs> singing challenge. That's going to be a thing. Homesteaders who sing. I'm not doing it, guys. <laughs> to do, I have to think of like a more creative way to make that fly. <laughs> I just that Roots and Refuge can sing, but I don't know if, if yeah. she, she, she sings. Challenge. Who else sings that I've been talking to lately? Natalie is singing. Mm -hmm. That's true. She sings. Yep. There's so many singers. No, not no singing. <laughs> so Jay, <laughs> Jay, you're saying that. Yeah. So Jay is going to be the second one tagged. <laughs> Jay, like, Morgan is. Definitely getting tagged and yeah. <laughs> by like so many people. Yeah. <laughs> I'm definitely gonna do that. Homesteaders who sing because it's a thing. It's totally a thing. There's a lot of us that yeah. play music or sing. Trish, Trish sings. yeah, she sings. She sings so pretty. She's in uh, uh, the Angel song. She sings in one of her videos, and it's gorgeous. <laughs> I know, sing. You don't want to hear. <laughs> I want to hear. It. But okay, guys, the singing challenge, auto correct, auto tune is allowed. So you can use like an app to make yourself sound good. That's totally allowed. What about that TikTok app? Oh, no. <laughs> oh, my God, Elkin Anchor. Please. I'm the worst dancer ever. It makes me feel, so I mean, I'll do it. I'll make, I'll, I'll have, I mean, we'll do it, but it'll be embarrassing. We, we don't refuse challenges. Only challenge that I've refused is one that I literally have no idea how to respond to. But because everybody already responded with the exact same thing, I would say. Yeah. Um, Daybird every year, aviaries. You can sing. You can totally sing. Jason, you did a ukulele cover. <laughs> oh. <laughs> Chicken explosion. Are you stuck, buddy? Oh gosh, my friend Hannah, who's on here at the Whitney Homestead. Um, oh. <laughs> actually, Hannah was there with. So I met Chris in Yellowstone um, on a business trip a few summers ago, like five, six summers, six summers ago, six years ago. Yeah. yeah. So, and my friend Hannah was there with me. That's how I met Hannah. And she is referencing to an instance where she did this dance on. With her husband as well. With her husband uh, at Old, Old Faithful on the boardwalk. And it was hilarious. Oh, uh, poor little chicky. Did you get scared? She thought that was happening. Yeah, I don't know why, but she got scared about something. Does she oh, have any? No, not yet. Because three are going to a friend. Three of them are, one's going to be, um, I don't remember what she said that she wanted to name her. Where? No. What are you trying to do? I was going to say we're at 803 to see. Oh, yeah. I okay, guys, it's been over an hour. And I apologize. This wasn't the most exciting live on our end. Kira, you were awesome. This was Kira's <laughs> first time. Yeah. If you haven't um, checked out her channel, please do. Yes, head on over to Kira's channel. She's so, wait, you're so close to 500. What are you at right now, Kira? Um, and when I checked this morning, it was 478. I haven't checked. Mm -hmm. okay, so, if all 23 of you watching, go give her some love. She'll do the okay. 500. But I bet all, I bet most of you are already subscribed. But. <laughs> well, people who are watching after the fact, go head over, give her some love, and, and you'll get to see her cooking food. Chicken coop yeah. conversion, garage conversion. Right. Yeah. Garage conversion. That's gonna be a giant chicken coop. Well, the way it's it's a it's a two car detached garage, and it's already like separated by a wall in the middle, so it's two bays. Oh, and so nice. Really, all I have to do is close the front with like chicken wire and a door, and um, I want to add some um, some some. Um, Sunlights in there at some point. Oh, cool! That that's a future thing that's more expensive. She keeps, yeah, she totally. keeps on my laptop. Thanks, Francine. That's really sweet of you. And yes, Kira does rock. And I can finally say your. I'm saying your name right, right? Yes, yeah. Kira. 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 Yeah. 
<laughs> saying it. Got to keep saying it. Um, okay. So yeah, I wanted to say thank you to everybody who is here tonight. Um, it's so nice just chatting with you guys. You guys definitely make my day. I would do lives for all of our videos if I could. It's so fun. Um, definitely feels like more connected when we can just talk back and forth. Thank you for being here. Thank you for taking time just to chat with us. Um, thank you to the amazing Kira for talking chickens with us. Thanks she for got, having me. Yeah, she got chickens totally unexpectedly, which is so fun. <laughs> And I, I, and I'm so obsessed with them now. I, I got the uh, McMurray Hatchery catalog and I'm just going through all the pages going, oh, I want one of those. I want one of those. Yeah. I want Marons. You gotta get you gotta get a couple of these copper marons. Look how cool they are. Uh yeah, they're gorgeous. And I just I can't have too many, so I just want like a few that lay different egg colors. And um just I don't know, have a little yeah. video. Yeah. And, and my husband's like, why do you want a blue egg? And I'm like, because they're pretty. I know. Instagram. Awesome. Yeah, Instagram. You get to teach people. Yeah, teach people <laughs> cool eggs. Yeah. So thank you. Thank you for my moderators. Thanks, Rose, for being here from Wholesome Roots. Rose is amazing. She teaches us so much all the time. Um, um, and thank you to who else is on here that's moderating. Well, Abby from Forgotten Way Farms is on here moderating. She did an awesome job. Same with the city stead, Josh, and my friend Hannah over at the Whitney Homestead. And I'm challenging you to make a video in, okay, I can't challenge you in the next month because you are about to have a baby, but next two months. <laughs> okay. There's no big deal once you have the baby, right? <laughs> okay, guys, thanks for being here. Have a wonderful weekend. I hope you're having some warm spring weather, and we can't wait to see you next week. Good night, guys. Bye.